What's up, math scholars? We are doing the first half of the SLO study guide. The SLO is going to be a pretty large test. There's going to be 20 questions on Polaris on Tuesday. That's worth 60 points, three points apiece. And then there's going to be a 10 question paper pencil portion on Wednesday worth 40 points. So you guys good at math with 60 plus 40? 100. You're going to earn 100 product points next week. So if you're looking at raising your grade, this is a great opportunity. Uh, the question was, why do we have to do the SLO? I am forced by the state of Ohio to do this. I heard it is going away, so that would be great. So maybe next year we won't have to do it. I don't know. All right, why do I have two recorders? Yeah, I was about to say you have two recorders. All right, our goal is first 15. Let's start with number one. Oh, yeah, who's excited to do the SLO? Yeah! They're actually smiling, which is so strange. Nobody likes SLOs. All right, um, let's try the first one. Everybody should get this right within like two seconds because it's old-fashioned factor technique. What numbers multiply to negative 28 that add up to 3? 4 and negative 7. Wouldn't it be negative 3? Negative 3. I meant to say that. Sorry. So which choice are we choosing? C. Very good math scholars. C. Number 2. What are the solutions of this equation? How would you do it? You could definitely plug and chug. This is a multiple choice problem. I'm just going to do it the math way because I'm a math teacher. Um, what numbers multiply to 6 that add to 3? I said that wrong. What numbers multiply 6 to add to 5? 3 and 2. And that makes our solution a negative 3 and a negative 2. To be honest, I think doing the math teacher way is quicker than plugging and chugging. Because to tell you the truth, I watch people plug and chug a lot, and they don't use their parentheses correctly. So if they're like plugging and chugging a negative 2, they don't remember to use the parentheses like that. So if you remember your parentheses, sure, but I found the answer real quick. Just learn <coughs> it from the math teacher way. <clears throat> Number three. Factor this expression. How would you guys do it? The box method. It is the box method. Now, if you don't want to use the box method, you could foil out the, the choices, the solutions. Because um, these numbers, I minimized it. Hello. Because um, I needed the box method. The box method is going to lead to some pretty big numbers. I was doing this problem with a kid the other day, and we were working with some large numbers, I remember. Um, 5 times negative 27 is actually negative 135. They might be experimenting to go out to figure out ways to multiply to 135. Uh, 5 and 27, would that be it? Probably not. That's not going to add up to 42. I mean, it actually ends up being 45 and 3. I got there that quick because I had just done this problem the other day. Um, if you make the 45, you're negative, and the 3, you're positive. You got it. <laughs> But again, if you don't like the box method, you could just foil out all the choices. That's the cheating kind of way to do it. Not that it's cheating, but, you know. So you pull your 5x in your first row, putting an x in the first column. What would be in my second column? What would live right here? Negative 9. Very good. <laughs> what would live right here? 3. So we want the choice with a positive 5x plus 3 and a negative, an x minus 9. Do you see it? B. Yep. Oh, fascinating. Fascinating. That one, All right. The next one, we're working with imaginary numbers, adding up our like terms. Uh, 1 and 9 will give you your 8. I and 7i gives you 8i. So what choice did you guys go with? Oh, yeah, I can't add. <laughs> I about missed that problem. I should get a ticket. Thank you. Yes, you get a ticket. Someone's awake today, not me, apparently. I just woke up ready to do that. He just woke up ready to do that. He's like, you know, it's Thursday, the day I'll be a math scholar. What <laughs> answer do we circle? D. Nathan's off the math scholar. Thank you. When he takes his earbuds out. What are you talking about? They're not. All right, so how in the world do you think we can solve this quadratic uh, trinomial and get imaginary solutions? Oh, gosh, you are a math scholar today. He's already singing the song. Now, there's no formulas provided to you on the SLO, so this song better be in your head. X equals the opposite of B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4AC divided by 
Okay, well, I hope my microphone picked up all that wonderful singing. Yay. You can tell we've got some choir members in here. One, negative eight, and 32 are your A, B, and C. They come from the coefficients of the original problem. Uh, this one's a little tricky because that negative B, when you're singing the opposite of the B, that'll actually turn the eight positive. We have the additional little problem here that we are, are squaring a negative eight, so you'll want to type it like that. Or you could just square a positive eight, 70, 64, either way. Minus four times A times C, all divided by two times A. Uh, oopsies. Do you remember what I always would tell you to type in first? What is that stuff's called? That green circle is called the discriminant. Did you see anything about the discriminant on your ACT? No. I've seen discriminant question. Um, type in the discriminant and report back on what you get. I think you must have typed it in wrong. Can you basically write 4 negative 64 square root of negative 64? Yes, it's the square root of negative 64. What did you ask, Logan? Couldn't you basically, like, get rid of that 1, just do 4 times 32? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And right here, to be honest, I didn't square a negative 8, I squared a positive 8, because my brain knew that it would be 64 regardless. That's cool. All right, so the square root of negative 64 is going to be 8i. The calculator will actually do it for you if you're in imaginary mode. We were in imaginary mode back in the day. 8 divided by 2 equals 4, and 8i divided by 2 equals 4i. Let's pause and check that if people are in imaginary mode. Hello, people on the video. We did a, just a discussion on whether people were or were not in imaginary mode. If you're getting error when you type in square root of negative 64, you're not in imaginary mode. But if you get 8i, you are. So you can just go into mode and select a plus bi. We, we came back um, because we forgot to circle our answer. You guys going with A, B, C, or D? D. Yep. All right, good thing we turned our calculator on because this is definitely a calculator problem. We're trying to find the maximum value, so like how high up that vertex is. So let's get this equation typed in the calculator oh, and graph it. We could use the vertex button, but we'll probably change the window first. How do you do the, the what is the vertex? Uh, it's going to be, the vertex is going to be the peak of the parabola, so like this guy. No, but how do you like figure out like what's like the equation well, for it? <coughs> divided by 2a. Oh yeah, we could do that. Negative p over 2a. Except people will probably forget that formula. Yeah, it's like the formula for the vertex. It's negative b over 2a. So it's 24 divided by 2a? Yeah. So it's So you guys on the video probably just didn't hear Logan because it doesn't pick up a lot of sound from far away, but he said, what's the vertex formula? It's x equals negative b over 2a. So he's like, oh, well, I'll just do that formula. I'll just do 24 over 2 times negative 2, and that'll be 24 over negative 4, which is negative 6. But that's the x-coordinate. The true maximum is going to be the y-coordinate, oh. so you would have to plug it back in. But that way definitely works. Why don't we just do it this way by hand, and then we'll show people how they can graph it. There's my calculator. So I'm putting a negative 6 in for x. I'm using parentheses around it. I end up getting 84. So that worked. That was awesome. I'm glad you asked about that, Logan. I wouldn't have thought of that. Doing it 100% by hand. You are a scholar. You should get a ticket. Yep, you're getting one. Heck yeah. <laughs> ah, okay, so for everybody else, if you're wondering how can we do it in the calculator, I graphed it. Unfortunately, I only saw about this much because it's going up to 84. So I, you can either do a zoom out or you can just change your window. The easiest way to change your window is probably just go down and make the, the maximum y-axis value 100. Then we're going to be able to see up higher, up to that 84. Um, there, we can see it. Whoa. You can either trace, use the trace button and trace along to get close to the vertex, or you can use your table and uh, scroll around to find your vertex, or there's even a vertex button. Second, calculate maximum, number four. And we would do the left bound and the right bound. So to pick a number to the left, I maybe would pick negative eight. Pick a number to the right, maybe I would just pick zero. And that creates that boundary. 
and enter one last time is the search zone. Remember, we did that a lot. So negative 6, 84. Yeah? Would that just be easier to go into the table? Table, scroll around the table, probably. Or just trace. The trace button would do it, too. So, it's totally up to you. You have so many options in this one. Uh-oh, a word problem. A rock is thrown from the top of a building, and the distance between the rock and the ground is given by this. How long after the rock is thrown is it 120 feet from the ground? So yeah? What if, like, you're doing this experiment and somebody walks under the rock? Well, that would be terrible. Um, so what, what method do you guys want to use? There's a lot of options. Since it's multiple choice, I would probably just advise you plug and chug. Just plug these different numbers in for time and see which one's going to get you to 120. Did somebody already try it? It's 3.1. It's D. I know. Or you could have done the Mrs. Germano method and start in the middle, but these aren't in order. So on the ACT, the answers are always in order. And she says if you're plugging and chugging, start in the middle. So you know whether you need to go bigger or smaller. Bigger minus? Bigger minus smaller. Put the answer with the bigger list. Yeah, you have to do that. Statistically, the answer like the most used answers. Not true. You said it, not us. All right, number eight. Uh, what are we going to do? I need some ideas. Distribute this little two. Uh, so the negative four squared would turn into a what? Positive 16. Uh, what would become my C exponent? Four, because it's two times two. What about my exponent D? Four. And what about E's exponent? Four. Good. So which answer choice is C. that? That was easy. You need the button. I, my dad has one. That was easy. It's like a guy's voice. Substitute. Use substitution to evaluate when m is 3. This is going to be easy. We'll put a 3 in everywhere we see an m. And just use our calculators. Everybody should have an A on this. You don't. You don't. You're special. You are not a scholar. You're not a scholar. Get on this, uh, Logan. What? Uh, You're on video, Logan. Oh, yeah. It actually doesn't pick up voices from far away very well. I find it wrong. Oh, I got this frame wrong. Uh-oh. I got 248. Maybe I messed something up in my setup. I oh, I know what I did. Yeah, I messed up. I got... Two. I messed up my setup. So if you're going off my setup, I had two... Six times three. So what did you get, Aaron? Okay, so we all okay with D? And I won't redo oh it. Gosh, that was totally 100% my fault. And it's on the video. And it's on the video. It's okay. That made people watch these videos. I'd say like five people. Amelia's stabbing me back here. Number 10. Looks like we're just um, going to distribute that negative to everybody in the second term and then add up all our like terms. So this negative will go here, making it a negative 2i cubed. The negative will go here, making it a negative 7i. And the negative will go here, making it a positive 1. Now we're going to use our colors to do our like terms. This one and this one can combine to 2i cubed. This one and this one can combine to negative 6i. And this one and this one can combine to negative 3. So I do that okay? We did it. Good. Finally, I did one with no mistakes. That's an exciting day. All right, number 11. If we can get past 15, that might be a smart idea for us no, because tomorrow's rally schedule, though. That makes me nervous. Right. Um, all right, are we going to do the rainbows or are we going to draw a box to do distributing of this thing? Box. Box? All right, so it would be a three by two box to do our distributing. If you want to do rainbows, that's fine. doesn't matter to me. So you have an n <coughs> plus 2, n squared plus 4n minus 2. So we have n cubed, 4n squared, negative 2n, 2n squared, 8n. Oh, am I going too fast? No, not at all. Sorry, I'll uh, let you check all that all those are okay. And slow down. I get excited. I love math. Thank you for the math. <laughs> Thank you for the math. Uh, I have a good... All right, so let's finish and add our like terms. I kind of put lines connecting my like terms. It'd be n cubed, 6n squared, 6n, and negative 4. 
Which answer is it looking like? I agree. Um, C. Yep. Oh, it's now for division time. Oh, my favorite! On the next one, the uh, the divisor. Division. The divisor's a cute little binomial. So, Nathan, already know. We are using synthetic division, my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you remember what goes in the little box? Um, three. A positive 3. Now, this one's tricky. Look very closely. We've got a 4x to the 4th. We have a negative 8x to the 3rd. Good. We don't have an x squared. Very good. And then we have an x and a negative 34. This is fun. This is probably my favorite thing we've come to so far. I'm so happy. Thank you for this fun math. So we're at, we drop our 4 down to start. you got to drop the 4 to start correctly. Then 4 times 3, add straight down. 4 times 3 is 12, add straight down. 12 times 3 is 36, add straight down. Uh, 12. 12. 12 times 3 is 36. Add straight down. So this is your remainder. They always put the remainder over the divisor. Uh, and this is the quotient. So the quotient is 4x to the third, 4x squared, 12x and 12. And then we'll put the 2 over the x over 3. Yeah, B. We we should only go to 15, so we can have a break. If you're, if you're positive, positive, that when we're on rally schedule. It's our first day back. Time. Our brain hurts. Okay. I would love to get to 18, so let's get to 18 today. Oh just, the rally schedule I makes mean, me nervous. Get to 18, then why don't we just go to 20? That's the multiple choice. Right? We'll just go to 18. Oh, how would I do this? I would graph it and look up and down table world. So if you're looking up and down table world for a zero, you're looking for a zero here. And then this guy would be a solution, or a zero, or an x-intercept. Oh, type yeah, type the equation in and scroll up and down the table and report back with your findings. Oh, I shall never do it. Oh, you know, I just looked at my paper. I have a big highlight on number 13, and I have close but not exact. So that means you might scroll up and down your table all day and you're not actually going to find it. You'll just have to estimate it from the graph world. Um, so I think there was a slight typo in this, if that makes sense. I think there was a slight typo in the problem. I should fix that for next year. Okay, the graph. Um, if you look at the graph, you're going to see it's crossing really close, but not exactly on negative 5. Really close, but not exactly on 1. And then and really close but not exactly on 4. So we're with negative 5, 1, and 4. They're not going to show up on the table because they're not exact. Does that make sense? So that equation probably had a slight typo, but we picked as close as we could get. Right here, right here, and right here on my zeros. All right, 14 should be a breeze. You can just type it in your calculator. And you remember where the fraction button is, right? At the end. If you get a decimal at the end, you just do math enter enter. So it's 1296. 1296 to the negative 1 divided by 4 power. If you want to fraction that answer, math. Enter, enter. 1 6. Um, so I was doing this the other day again, and I said, we're going to break this down so that one of the numbers is a perfect cube. And the kid's like, I forgot my perfect cubes. You can generate a list of perfect cubes so easily. What's one cube? One times one times one? Three. One. one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe you didn't wake up those math over today. <laughs> What's two cubes? Two times two times two? Six. Eight. <laughs> I'm so wrong. He's messing with me. Uh, what's three cubes? Seven. Three times three times three. And then four times four times four. You just made yourself a perfect cube list. Four times four times four. I can't make 64. Um, so which of these numbers will divide the 108? Do you know? You can experiment. 27. So 108 <laughs> is going to be written as the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 4. 27 times 4 is 108. So it's three cube roots of four. 
<clears throat> I'd say we'll get to 19. That'll finish the first page. That'll be good. The first page will be done. Like this is like this stuff I can do. It was just the ACT made my brain hurt. <laughs> All right. Do we remember how to do this? It's a two-step problem. Yes. You start here. So you start by doing h of negative 3, which is putting a negative 3 in for x. What answer does that give you? 27. 27. But then you take that answer 27 and put it in the equation h again. So you're using equation h twice. So now I'm putting a 27 in for x. That's a pretty big number. 2,000 more at least. Yeah. Let's see. 21. <laughs> Faster, faster. We had to take a negative 3. I'll recap. You're going to take a negative 3, oh, go yeah, to equation H, right. you'll get 27. Take a 27, go to equation H, you'll get... Okay. 17. We have a little song for finding inverses. So, switch the X and Y, then resolve it. So here's my switch step. Everybody does good on the switch step. Everybody does bad on the resolve step. What am I going to do to resolve for Y? So Subtract six. this 4 over to the left-hand side and divide everybody by 4. So it's x minus 4 over 4. Yeah. This is totally Who's going to watch this? No one. <laughs> no one? That's what Actually, all right, so domain and range, we always did things like negative infinity to infinity and 2 to infinity, but they're writing it different, but that's still okay. I still think you could select the correct answer. Let's graph it and see what it looks like. Square root of x minus 2. The x minus 2 is in the um, square root symbol. So where does it look like this is going on the x-axis? From 2 to infinity. So from 2 on up. And on the y-axis for range, from 0 on up. So let's see if we can figure that out. So which one says that on the x-axis it goes from 2 up, and on the y-axis it goes from 0 up? Very good. So even though they didn't write it like we write it, we still figured it out. All right, and we will end on 19. And then it's just never 20, which is also multiple choice. I know, but it's on page 2. <laughs> I guess Logan really wants to do 20. We'll do it for him. How are we going to start this on both sides? What would I do? Cube, 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 cube both sides cube. to cancel the cube root. So x minus 6 equals 5 cubed. Isn't it 5 cubed to 125? Yes. And then finish by adding 6. So 131. That was always my track number. That's so lucky. Whoa. 131. All four years. Yep, it's my favorite number. All right, number 20. Last one. The velocity of sound and air is given with this equation, where V is velocity and T is temperature. Find the temperature when the velocity is 330. All right, so we stick in the 330 in for V or T? V. Do you want to solve it using algebra, or do you want to solve it using plugging and chugging? doesn't matter to me. Or <coughs> I'd rather do it. You want to do it as algebra? All right, Nathan's going to plug and chug, and we're going to use algebra. No, I'll you can get to the answer first. It doesn't matter either method. I'm not offended if you plug and chug. Using algebra, we start by dividing both sides by 20. 16.5. What do you think we would do next? Anyone? Square, <laughs> square both sides to cancel the square root. Two seventy-two point two five, and what do you think we would do last? Subtract two seventy-three. Oh, poop! We got an answer that's not on there. Yeah, we want. It's probably negative one. Yes, yeah, to the right. nearest degree. Did anybody do plug and chug to see? Yeah, I got negative one. You did. I don't think you did. I, I didn't do this one yet on my answer key, so I don't know if that answer key is correct. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, if you watched the 24 minute video, congrats to you. That was a long video, but hey, we're in a good spot to get done tomorrow yeah, with yeah, the rally yeah. schedule. So thank you. And, and